Welcome to Property Deconstructed with Mark Ericello from Master Advocates. They specialise in finding the perfect home for you, an investment property or a home just to suit your needs. My name is Pat Panetta from Tell Your Story Media. We tell stories of businesses and individuals to inspire and share knowledge. Now this is called Property Deconstructed. So if you're thinking of buying or selling a property, whether it be for investment or for your use, the tips and tricks from professionals in our studio. Mark Ericello joins me again. G'day Mark. Hey Pat, how are you? Great to see you again. Good to see you mate. Now it's up to you to find our special guests every episode. So who have you lined up for us this week? I've got the great man, Sean O'Neill from IRS International. We utilise ourselves and many other clients with plumbing and electrical services. Uh But importantly, Sean's one of the Victorian and electrical supervisors with IRS and can provide pre-purchase reports for due diligence for electrical as well. And the company do plumbing, which we'll we'll hear about a bit later on also. Sean, thanks so much for coming on, mate. No worries. Thanks for having us here. Thank you. Please introduce yourself, your background and experience and what IRS can provide? My experience is six years as an electrician, predominantly yep. in the residential and commercial sector. We've done all sorts of, you know, upgrades, safety checks and installation work. So we cover a broad scope, which has given me real quality experience. So Mark uses you to check out a property when someone wants to buy a residential or commercial property. You guys sort of work together to make sure everything's okay. We do. And so one is the buyer beware process, whether they're owner occupying or investing. And I know I've mentioned it before, but I'll keep mentioning it now. You've got the residential tenant reforms in Victoria which have been in place for a little while but they'll be enforced 2023 and they are more around the minimum standards that properties need to have so Mm -hmm. even more important if you're buying an investment understand the structural integrity electrical and plumbing standards that need to be met so there's no surprises one that it's safe and that you're not liable the onus is on the buyer to ensure this is all okay once you're a purchaser if the intentions as investment it is your liability as a landlord minimum property owner or rental provider the terms keep changing but Yes, that's one that's a little bit positive in the sense that you're being proactive about doing the tenancy checks. But we also use IRS for emergency calls. They're a 24-hour service. So post-maintenance and call-outs, I think they're fixing a hot water system that blew overnight. Someone's fixing an electrical hot water system for us today Hmm. for one of our investor clients' properties. With that residential tenancy checks, the pre-purchase reports are quite detailed. Sean, you might want to share from the electrical side. I think they're really important too because, you know, your electrical system, that's life or death, you know, if you have problems with these you've got the risk of electric shock and house fires i've heard of a few different stories like there's just three houses alone that i'm just aware of that have burnt down or had a fire and they were all electrical caused. and you can't always test for it too because you know our tests only go so far you can test the reliability of the insulation we can test the earth and it's really good now these amazing products have come on the market they test for like arc faults so if you have like a bad connection what happens is the electricity tries to jump through and it creates a lot of heat now that can't always to be detected by your RCDs and your overloads. But they've got these incredible devices now which monitor how the electricity works and it will cut off like any dangerous arcs at all, which can pretty much guarantee that your house will not catch on fire right. because of an electrical fault. What does so that look like, that piece of equipment? It just looks like it's sort of, you know, <laughs> yeah. got swirling no. dials on it and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> no, it's no. pretty good. Like, technology's come a long way now. It's just a little device that we'll put in the switchboard, like one on each circuit. That'll pretty much prevent all electrical house fires, which I think's yeah. incredible. And wow. in the future, this is going to go in. Sort it's of fantastic. House. Yeah. And can that be retrofitted? Well, talking about those tenancy minimum standards, all switchboards need to be updated now by 2023. I've actually just put a few in my house on the weekend, and I'm going to recommend them to all my family and friends. You know, if you think of how much it's worth. People running appliances, home offices, and yeah, exactly. overloading switchboards. Yeah. And your home too. Like, that's a place where you're with your family, you have people over. You know, there was a little girl who was like five years old over in Perth a few years ago, and there was an electrical fault, and then she touched the tap while she was like filling up some water Hmm. and because they had a fault on their electrical system the Hmm. current went through it and killed her the last thing you want to do too is like burn down in your own house if you are an investor and it's not your home that you occupy you want to know one you're not going to be liable but you're providing that safe environment yes and and the law rightly so i mean that's such a tragic story is so tough on this and will come down on you like a ton of bricks if you don't sort of follow the right sort of procedure and and do the right thing well that's exactly what it's in place for that being said is there a certain period of property property that you find more faults with compared to others or ones that you prefer and feel like okay we're walking in here it should be good probably your older houses so you've got wiring and it's been in there for you know 60 70 years over time you know especially in australian conditions we might get five days in a row of 40 degrees it's running electricity all the time heat 
will deteriorate the insulation over time. The more your older properties, and they had solid core conductors back then, I think maybe 20 years ago they changed it. But what happens with that is they're more likely to snap, especially in and around like your switches and power points. So that's where you get the arc faults. And also you've got 40 years of an electrician or a DIY guys come in and change things. You've had renovations. All sorts of things can happen over the lifespan of a property. Interesting, we had a previous guest who spoke about the structural of all a building the before the 80s. It was in good nick, but you're sort of saying the opposite because as it gets older, there's heat, there's wear and tear. People doing less on their own and actually getting licensed people. Yeah. Mum and dad would sort of do it themselves. <laughs> so the older properties is what you need to be concerned about. Yeah, yeah. Right. Look, some of the stuff I've seen, like I've gone through houses doing these tests and I've found like insulation because they didn't have the right circuit protection. It was just off those old fuses. The insulation had completely melted. There was exposed conductors, so anyone sort of crawling through the roof, Ooh, oh, wow. you know, if that was live, that could have been, you know, the end of them pretty easily. The old ceramic circuit breakers. Yeah, the common yeah. Wire. You want to get rid of those. And the other thing too is like your earth connection. Your earthing is so important because... Any fault current that you have, the earth provides a safe path for that to go so it doesn't go through you. Now, if you've got a connection that's been exposed to the weather for 30, 40 years, it's going to corrode, it's going to deteriorate. Or in some sections, if they've done a renovation. So before 1976, all your earthing was done through your water pipe. And then if anything has been repaired there and you've got PVC in between the connection and where that pipe goes into the ground... You don't have a safe earth anymore. That's just right, going right. nowhere. So yeah. how does this affect your world, Marcus? I hear this, okay, so Sean gets in there and he comes back to you and says, this all needs to be done yes. or changed. You've got to rewire the whole <laughs> joint. Sounds expensive to me. Like, yeah. How do you deal with that? Well, look, I think from an advocate's point of view, we're focusing on property values and locations and our opinion where they can even add value in future and have some wealth. But Got it. It just paints the, the accurate the reality picture. Yeah, and from what you're buying, we're engaging a team of professionals to help make that informed decision uh-huh. again. You can't mitigate all risk, but at least we know at this point of time, this is the assessment from a professional, like an electrical inspection or building and plumbing, and then have that roadmap again, what needs to be fixed And it is what it is, at least you know. Yeah, and you can Mm. budget or create a roadmap to improve things, Mm. or what's immediate, got to jump on this now, Mm. or walk away if it's risky enough because all those checks you just mentioned they're pretty much picked up regarding the earthing in the pre-purchase reports as well we yeah. go into more detail about that even like the condition of switches and outlets if you've got a house that's 60 years old that switch has a crack on it quite often if I play with it 6 or 7 times it'll half come off and if I pull the cover plate off that switch will just pop right off I've gone out to check places and there hasn't even been any plastic on the switch so if you just put your finger on it you're going to get a zap a lot of people assume building and pest inspectors covered it they're not maybe alerting you to some danger and saying doesn't look good so you do need that overall picture especially investors now that there's strict minimum standards it has to be done and it's part of the process yeah, and it's... that's why they need somebody like you mark who's an advocate to take them through the process and make sure it's all done correctly yeah we can just recommend and then it's up to your own individual appetite for risk i guess because it's such a big emotional decision we've said this before on the show purchasing a home or an investment property you don't want to stuff it up do no, you <laughs> no get it right the first time sean o'neill irs international thanks for your time on property deconstructed Perfect. Thank you very much for having me on. You can find them online. They've got a great website, IRS International.